Say that again. We're coming to see uh, the minister. We're on our way to walk over to the Minister of Children and Youth Services office at 55 Wellesley, I believe it is, uh, Minister Deb Matthews. And uh, one question that I'm going to have for her is I want to know why on the ministry's website when you submit correspondence to the ministry via email and it says who you want the correspondence to and if you want to reply. I want to know why the approximately 20 to 30 some odd letters which I have specifically addressed for Deb Matthews and specifically asked for a reply from Deb Matthews have never once received one single reply from the Minister of Children and Youth Services, Deb Matthews. That's what I want to know. The families feel that um, a good indication of what we believe to be fraud and malfeasance being perpetrated by the CASs mm -hmm. is uh, an examination of how much of their budget they have to dedicate to litigation. With the you know with the obvious assertion being that if a CAS has to dedicate a significant percentage of their budget to litigation something's wrong um, they we believe from our own personal experiences that there are CAS's uh, specifically I can identify the Waterloo Regional mm -hmm. CAS which are engaging in dirty tactics and malfeasance for the specific purpose of alienating families alienating parents so that um, they can effect a horribly contentious long dragged out litigation which is severely injurious to the families we're circumventing the legislation okay and again we're just families we're just individuals most of us socioeconomically come from working class working poor or poor families most of us are blue collar workers construction factory whatever we're just families we cannot defeat or be expected to defeat adversaries as substantial as the minister the government of ontario the ministry of children and youth services the ontario court of justice and the children's aid societies on our own Minister and Deputy Minister's Office, can you give us information on the Commission to Promote Sustainable Children's Aid Societies? Um, I can let you know that we're looking at a three-year commission that's going to look at sustainable children's aid societies. Um, we haven't determined who the commission is already yet. We're really excited for it, and we've talked to CIS about it a little bit, but there's still a lot of decisions to be made. Okay. Can uh, Yeah, but we don't have a timeline. Um, will there be any opportunity for families litigating against CASs to participate in that process? I think the Children's Aid Society Commission is really more focused on uh, funding formulas and the relationship between the ministry and the CAS in terms of uh, budgetary processes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if your concerns would be appropriate for the commission, mm -hmm. but you know, we can certainly let you know. Hello. Hi, Ms. Wallace. How are you today? It's Chris Carter. We're, we're, um, a number of the of the families are out here in the hallway, and um, we're hoping to speak with the minister or the deputy minister or even um, somebody like Patrick Mitchell, who was out here previously. And we just have a couple of questions. Uh, one specific question we have is, um, what has happened to the commission to promote sustainable children's aid societies? Hey, folks. I'm with the office. Oh, great. Hi, how are I'm you? Oh, I'm Chris. Hi, Chris. Nice good to meet you. Hi. Hi. Excellent. Sally Mack. Hi, good to meet you. What are your, if, for example, families had um, 
credible evidence mm -hmm. in regards to uh, fraud or malfeasance being perpetrated by a CAS. For example, um, statements being made in their internal notes which contradict statements that they've made in affidavits. Mm -hmm. Or for example, not filling out the um, standards or the tools manual, not mm -hmm. following the standards or filling out the tools manual correctly. Mm -hmm. Where can we turn? So I'm assuming that you've gone through the CAS complaint process? Um, okay, well, you're in the minister's office. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Excellent. Yeah. Well, we have a few questions. I, were you aware that we had a rally at Queen's Park? Today? We did hear about it, yeah. yeah. Is there any possibility that we might be able to get the minister to speak at next year's rally? Uh, we can certainly look at that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Excellent. It's referred to as the Rally for Accountability, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, it's to me. support Bill 93 yeah. to get the Ombudsman uh, oversight. What is the ministry's position on, on granting the Ombudsman oversight? Are you guys aware of it? Uh, at this point, uh, it's a private member's bill. Right. Does, does the minister have an official position on whether or not uh, as to how she feels about Bill 93? Uh, I think at this point, the position is that Review board has been replaced. Yeah. I wonder if you can understand the dismay of the parents. Mm -hmm. So here they are alleging that CASs are engaging in malfeasance and fraud, yeah. and then this internal complaint review panel mm -hmm. asks us to entrust our complaints mm -hmm. to a panel made up of three <laughs> children's aid society workers, mm -hmm. and then the fourth not being allowed to be a Children's Aid Society worker, but being allowed to be one of their board of directors. Mm -hmm. It is, excellent, good. It, it, it's, I mean, it's, it's so, the, the families are so obviously disadvantaged in that process. The minister consider um, granting powers under the Statutory Powers Act to the Child and Family Services Review Board, because, and correct me if I'm wrong, what is the, the perception is that when the Child and Family Services Review Board was strengthened in 2006, mm -hmm. the ministry specifically omitted granting the review board powers under the Statutory Powers Act. How does the what's the ministry's position on that now? Well, she'd certainly like to hear your thoughts on mm -hmm. that in writing. Have you have you written to the minister on that? That's another good point. I have written probably between ter 20 and 30 letters, mm -hmm. submitted them to the ministry via the email process yeah on the website it says who do you want the communication to go toward mm -hmm. to and in my case I have always specifically identified the minister and that I am expecting a reply it asks if you want a reply mm -hmm. and I have not received one single answer from the minister herself it's always come from the regional director Vince Tedesco in our, in our case okay what do you have to do to get the minister's involvement and also along the same lines, what are the criteria for the ministry granting a section 67 under the Child and Family Services Act where the minister appoints a judge from the Ontario Court of Justice to not adjudicate a case where families are severely disadvantaged against the Children's Aid Societies, but to actually investigate a case. Um, the, the distinction is quite, quite drastic and and quite possibly will be more beneficial to the families who are being litigated against by the CASs. What are the criteria for getting a 67, Section 67 order? Well, it's just on the, your first question there, mm -hmm. of course, Bonds will certainly look into that. Thank you. I know when inquiries over of a case-specific nature, <coughs> a lot of times regional directors uh, will respond on behalf of the minister. Did, did he acknowledge that he was responding on Correct. behalf of the minister? Correct, yes. So generally, if they're province-wide concerns, so if mm -hmm. you're writing to her about Bill 93 or other things like that, she would respond. Oh, but I sometimes see. because she doesn't have the, the case level information that a regional director uh, may have, that right. they'll respond on their behalf. But we'll certainly look into Fair enough. the submissions you've made. Thank you. Um, we'll have to look into Section 67. I'm just not familiar with it offhand. Okay. Uh, I do know that regional directors are uh, delegated as directors under the Act, mm -hmm. and so they do do a lot of operational functions that right. the minister is empowered to do. Oh, I see. Um, they're, they're appointed as directors, and, and she delegates responsibility for some some things that do occur. But I'll have to look at Section 67 specifically. Okay. I'm just not familiar with it, uh, but, but Chris, we can certainly look into that. Well, I appreciate that.